actually have a question for all of you. When you're a Scotsman, what's the first thing you think about? Braveheart. That's, yeah, yes, kill us, Braveheart. Excellent. So we're going to give you a little bit of gold today. So first, we're going to talk about the kilt as a garment. It's, it's the, it is the national dress of the Scottish people at this point in history. And uh, Eagle originated in the Scottish Highlands. Now all Scots, the bald hill families, wear the kilt. My good friend Brad McDonald Brad is wearing a Good friend of mine, also a member of the same class. We're both wearing a McDonald plaid. And uh, what he's wearing is a more modern version of the kilt. There's not much difference uh, at first sight between the two of ours. But his is made by Sport and it's designed so that people uh, who want to compete in heavy athletics, who's heard of Cater Cross? <laughs> right? How about the, the Stone Cross? Or, or backhole wrestling? Yeah. So these are some of the uh, ancient national pastimes and uh, really comparable to the Olympics. They're pretty amazing fights on strength. And uh, Brad uh, participates in all these things. So his kilt was more designed for that. Uh, mine is more of a formal garment. I was married in this last uh, January. She's not over there. So the, Brad is wearing a, a Clan Donald shirt. Right? This is this is very typical. You'll go to the Scottish games and you'll see different clans wearing the shirts that are it's a very modern thing. I'm wearing a more ancient uh, style, typically referred to as a Japanese shirt. Um, it's not its original name, but uh, we both wear sporans. His is more modern again. Uh, mine has more kind of an ancient look. I'm wearing boots. He's wearing tennis shoes. <laughs> but that's totally okay because of what he does. Wearing these boots or wearing traditional ghillie robes, it would not be, it wouldn't be very easy to toss cake or something with Brad. And he knows more than I do, so. And now, uh, what we're going to do is show you the, the origin of both of these kilts. And uh, it's, a, it's a garment called the Great Kilt. This is called the Small Kilt, or the Filthy Bag. What Brother Barton is going to help us with is uh, how to wear the, uh, the Great Kilt, or the Filthy Bag. And Brad is going to uh, say a few words about the kilt while we get ready. Okay, so uh, my friend James here, he's going to lay this kilt out. Now, uh, has anybody here heard of the term the whole nine yards? <laughs> yes, heard that term? Well, the whole nine yards refers to the whole nine yards of wool used to make a traditional kilt. Now, this kilt is only six yards, but that's still considerably large. Um, and they originally, it was the whole nine yards to, to create the kilt. Now, the kilt is made from wool, and it is, uh, generally speaking, uh, pretty warm because it's made for Scottish weather. Now, I'm wearing a sport kilt, which is uh, kind of a synthetic blend, and these are made for, you know, California weather. You know, we're not gonna wear nine yards of wool to 100 degree weather when we compete in the games. But the, the way um, we put on these kilts is very easy. You just kind of wrap it up like, a, like jeans or something. You wear a belt. But traditionally, you have to fold your kilt in order to wear it. And this is, uh, this is what James is doing right now. He's going to demonstrate how to apply the kilt and wear an original kilt. Now, uh, the kilt is shrouded in a lot of myth and mystery. Uh, what we do know is that in the 1700s is when different clans began to standardize their colors for the kilt. Prior to that, it's kind of unknown. Um, in Scotland, there was a great rebellion in the 1700s against the English. The Scots lost, and the English banned the kilt from being worn. It was a great shame to many Scots. And they even created a dance um, based, called the Sean Truce, which means shaking off the truce, based on their hatred of wearing pants. Now, part of that is because in Scotland, they're always hiking through the mountains, through rivers and creeks and whatnot, and pants would bog them down quite literally as they're trudging through the bogs. So a lot of Scots would wear um, open shoes or just no shoes at all as they traveled through the countryside and had to go through treacherous terrain. Um, so traditionally, um, 
the, let's see. I think we're about ready to put the kilt on now. <laughs> so this is kind of an ancient uh, practice that was done on a daily basis by Scots of old. And uh, generally speaking, you would do it yourself. You wouldn't have somebody else do it for you. But because of demonstration purposes, we're going to have James do this for our friend here. Now, if you were a chief, you'd have a particular servant known as a gilly board that would actually that would actually be uh, completing it for you. So for now, Brother Barton is going to be uh, our chief. <laughs> Unfortunately, um, the ban on the kilt was lifted, so no longer is it banned to wear the kilt in Scotland or elsewhere. And the famous saying nowadays is, the kilt is Scotland's gift to everyone. And you do not have to be Scottish to wear a kilt, no matter what anyone thinks. It's for everyone. And there are kilts for different nations, there are kilts for different uh, families that aren't even Scottish nowadays. It's, it's become kind of a global, universal uh, thing to wear, which is great for everyone. All right, All right looks good. There are many ways of wearing the great kilt. This is one that people who uh, maybe watch the Outlander TV series are familiar with. This is how you flip it over your, your shoulder. This is one way. This is what you might typically see. And the modern uh, sash, or the women wear it, it's called the arche. It goes on the shoulder. And it's derived from when this whole piece of fabric was taken from the kilt and the modern kilt was created. So the other way you can wear this So in this manner, it's being tucked in. It's kind of a casual way, way to wear it. If casual was such a thing in the 1700s in Scotland. I'm not sure. <laughs>